Clock Tower was released in the U.S. with no prior knowledge of a prequel. This just appeared to be a first game, which made it semi-confusing. Without that prior knowledge, who Scissor Man was was really, it was anybody's guess. And playing this game didn't quite make that much sense. But later in the years, we found out that there was an original released in Japan only under the Super Famicom. And it can be had now for the Super Nintendo, thanks to reproduction cartridges, even with an English translation. Clock Tower is a point and click style game, oh! which is actually a turnoff for some people. But your involvement is simply making decisions, putting the cursor where you'd like to go, or placing it on top of an object you'd like to check out or pick up. Easy, right? Well, not really. You see, hampering you along the way is Scissor Man. He randomly pops up and has to be dealt with each time, either by hiding or finding an object to fend him off. You can run, but you can't hide does not come into play here. Here, it's you can hide, but you can't run. Once he's after you, he stays on you, and there's no running away. You have to hide or fight. I got this game upon its release back in 1997, the very second I saw it in a store. Now, back then, internet walkthroughs weren't available. Online reviews and previews weren't there. And that's how I recommend you play this game, Cold Turkey. Now, despite its graphical limitations due to the technology at the time, Clock Tower still holds up today, and it's guaranteed to get your heart racing. Playing Clock Tower for the first time, there's one pretty much guarantee. You're not going to make it through, at least not to the best ending. There's a lot of items you have to find, and you have to know exactly what to do with them. And also hampering you along the way, of course, is...
So if you're a lover of horror games and you never played Clock Tower, give it a shot. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised.